Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to Paco and to our worship service. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. Um, I have a couple of announcements I'd like to make. First and foremost, next Sunday is Pentecost. It is one of the holy high days in Christendom. And so we would like to invite you to come to the church and pick up your communion kits so we can have communion together next week. Um, we will be doing a full communion service. If you have picked them up, we'll have them back by the mailboxes. Come in and get enough for your family and um, so that we can share in that rite of the church together. The other thing I would like to say is that we are celebrating with our graduates, um, Derek Glenn, Ethan Nemec, Brody Robinson, Marissa McIntyre, and I'm forgetting somebody, Zachary Bodie. So please keep these young people in your prayers and in your thoughts as they begin a new chapter in their lives. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in it. Our service this morning comes from With One Voice, and we begin with our opening hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. It is in Lutheran Book of Worship, page 359. Oh, 
the lesson be to God. The second lesson, a reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. I was asked to read this twice. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion in your adversary, the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Given me, 
so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and let the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. Dear God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In Christendom, we say it so casually that we begin to even doubt that we mean it as we say it. I'll pray for you. I'll keep you in my prayers. My thoughts and prayers are with you. It's easily said. It comforts us to say it to someone who is in distress, to someone who is going through something that we may not be able to assist them in, to someone who is having pain and suffering. To someone whom we love and cannot comfort properly. And so we say, I'll pray for you. And we walk away. Oh, we might, when we get home, remember that we said it. God willing, we might even actually do it. But prayer for us becomes a convenient way to escape something painful that we have no idea how to cope with. It's the words we use to separate us from situations where we have no other control. What does it mean to really pray for somebody those of you who have known me for very long know that I tell you immediately when somebody says, pray for me, don't walk away and go home with a, I certainly will, on your lips. Stop and do it then. Grab their hand, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this, my brother or sister. Don't wait and be delayed by it. Because there is power in prayer. There's hope in prayer. There's strength in prayer. There is promise in prayer. All of it awarded to us by a Christ who in this Gospel of John prays to his Father for us. This is the Lord's prayer. These are the words that he intercedes to his Father for us with. Here in this 17th chapter of John is our Christ on his knees interceding and asking God to care for us, for you, and for me. All mine is yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified in them. I have been glorified in them. And then he says, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Wow, that's Jesus talking about us. Our Christ who died for us, who was resurrected for us. That was for us. And 
And so we go on. And we speak these words to one another. My Jesus prayed for me. He thought I was special enough to be mentioned. He believed in me enough to intercede with the Almighty God himself. How important and special should we feel that our Christ prayed for us? And so it is not a casual thing when we offer prayer to one another. Understand that it has been modeled to us by Christ himself. Prayer for protection. Prayer for glorification. Prayer for belonging. As Jesus belongs to God, so we belong to him. And how then do we repay that? It's easy. Then we, you and I, pray for one another. The same kind of powerful words that Jesus uses here when he prays for us. Not a tepid few words. Not a casual way of making people feel better but with all the power and might available to Christ, he puts that in God's hands and he does it for you and for me. So then, how much power does our prayer carry? Well, if we don't do it, it doesn't carry any. If we do it casually, God will hear. But were we, as Christian brothers and sisters, to intercede on our knees for one another, how much power does that release into the hands of the Almighty God? We have the ability to release all of the power that Christ has given to us. We have the power to change the natural things in the world that look unchangeable. We can conquer fear. We can conquer illness. We can conquer hopelessness. We can even conquer death. Because Christ, in his word, has given us that power in prayer. So don't walk away from a hopeless situation and toss over your shoulders the words, yeah, I'll pray for you. Take the time to do it. Take the opportunity to do it sincerely. Take the understanding to do it with the knowledge that Christ is able and willing to answer all of our prayers. When I was a kid growing up in my grandfather's church, we used to sing a song and it said, somebody prayed for me. They kept me on God's mind. They took the time to pray for me. And then the chorus said, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My Jesus prayed for us. He kept us on God's mind. He took the time to pray for you and for me. And
So our hymn is Blessed Assurance, it's in With One Voice, page 699. <laughs> Keep yourselves in the love of God. 
Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your way. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. As you at home, please pass the peace to one another. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all time and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces, those who risk their lives in hospitals and on streets. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never-failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I would remind you again that next Sunday is Pentecost. Even if we are not together in the same space, I invite you to wear your red proudly and welcome the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him, blessed be the tie that binds.